Here's the situation. You have a bunch of animations on your game character, but it's hard to manage the transitions between them. You've been writing tons of if statements, and every time you change something, it all breaks. We'll solve this with Godot's animation state machine. So we're starting out with this sprite sheet, which you can get in the link below. And I've already made a character and created the animations in the animation player for all of these different animations. We have run, we have some attacks, and all of them are set up and ready to go. And in our script, I have some generic movement, kinematic body movement. So if we were to play this scene, you know, the character can move around and we are reversing direction so they face in the direction we want them to face. But we want to play the animations at the right time. So assuming you have all that, you're going to want to add an animation tree. And in this animation tree, we're going to go over here to the tree root. We're going to select a new animation node state machine. And then for the animation player property, we're going to click assign and choose our animation player node so that it will be able to pull all the animations from that node. And now in here, we can start adding our animations. If I right click, I can choose animation. And here I see all the ones that I had. All right, so I can choose my idle animation. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the rest of them. Now notice the message down here. If we click active on, now this is active and it will do the animations when we click on them. So if I'm running idle, run, attack. And now that we have the animations in here, we can make connections between them. Let's say we wanted to connect our attack to our idle. This button here connects nodes. So if I click that, I can draw and connect a line between idle and attack. Now let's, let's add the other one over here. And so now I have a line between idle and attack. Attack 1 goes to attack 2, and then attack 3 goes back to idle. So what happens when I click attack 1? Well, it plays, right? And attack 2 plays. But if I'm on idle and I click attack 2, we just see attack 2. And that's because these transitions by default are, make this a little wider, immediate. The switch mode on the connections. If I were to change, say this one, the switch mode to at end, which I could also do with this one, now what happens is if we're in the idle state and we want to transition to attack two, it's going to play attack one first, complete, then play attack two. Let's see that again. Attack one, attack two. But now we stop because attack two, of course, doesn't loop, so when it reaches the end, of the animation, it goes no further. Well, this one we can set to auto advance. So that means at the end of attack two, it's going to go back to idle. So watch if I click attack two, I'm back to idle. So let's connect up all the other animations. So here are our connections all made up, and so now we can transition from whatever state to whatever state. So when we're in idle, we can go to run along this connection. Run goes right back to idle. If you attack, you're going to come right back to idle. If you're hurt, you're going to come right back to idle. But then we have the die animation, which is not going to have a return. When we get there, it's the end, and we can mark that using this button right here as the end animation. And we can also mark idle here as the start animation. That way it'll automatically be playing this one when the game starts. Now just to show you, you can double up these things. Let me make a little more room here. We can also add another copy of the 
attack one and attack two to make a to make a double attack, which we could do like that. Set these to at end auto advance. And that way we have a way for us to do a double attack as well as the individual single ones. Now how would we control this in code when we move? Let's go over to our adventurer's script here and we're going to add some code to call those state transitions in our for our animation tree. And we're going to start by getting a variable that will hold that reference to the animation state machine. And in our ready, we're going to need to get that reference. So state machine equals animation tree dot get, and there's a parameter that we have to get. Parameters playback is the parameter we want. Now we have a reference to that, and that's going to get us this root node, this animation node state machine node, which has all of the functions for calling the individual animations and making those transitions. So for example, let's start with the simpler ones. Let's say we, we want to be able to play the hurt animation when the player gets hurt. So whatever item is damaging the player could call the player's hurt function, which is going to tell the state machine to travel to the hurt animation. And what travel does is find the shortest path between current node and the one you're going to. So if we're in idle and we said travel to attack two, it has to go through attack one. And that's how travel works. And we could have the same thing with die. When the player's health runs out, we could tell it to travel to die. And we could also set physics process to false so that we can't even move anymore. But now we want to handle some of the movement animations. So in our get input, we're going to check the current, get the current animation state, which comes from state machine.get current node. And that'll tell us what node is currently running, like idle or run. And then once we check our inputs and get our velocity, we can we can put here if velocity.length equals zero, then we want to be in the idle state. So we're going to say travel to idle. And then if our velocity length length is greater than zero, then we're going to travel to the run animation. We can also check for our attack in input here. So after we set the speed to zero, we can check if is action just pressed and we'll check for the attack action and if we did then we're going to travel to attack one and I'll copy this here and then I also have an input called big attack that lets us call the attack, we're going to call it attack two number two. I haven't changed the names here, so I'm just using the defaults. So we want big attack to travel to attack two, two. Now, if we go to attack one, like say we're in this state, say we're going to here, but we call idle or run, we're going to jump back. So I'm also going to return if I'm attacking so I don't check the other inputs and set this and try and set the state yet. So let's try that out. 
So here I am running around. I'm in run when I'm moving. I'm in idle when I'm not. If I press attack, attack happens. If I press, if I press big attack, I get the double attack. And if I attack while I'm moving, I can still do that. This tutorial is part of my new Godot Recipes website. The goal is to collect all the best tips and lessons to help make you a better Godot developer. If you like this video, I hope you'll go and check out the site. And make sure to hit subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks for watching.